another fast and fun video it's rich here and in this week's video i just want to take a look back at my first two months of owning this 2005 blob eye sti give you some early ownership views of what i've found and learned in my first two months so far about seven or eight hundred miles probably in the car um, we've used it a couple of times for work um, gone to a car show in that time as well and took a few fram friends and family out in the car and also it's one of those cars that you just pick the keys up and just go for a drive for no other reason that it's a great thing great thing to do some of an early impressions of the car well um, the sound uh, you just it's so distinctive. I love the sound inside the car. I love it, leaving, love it even better outside the car. That burbling flat four cylinder boxer engine, absolutely so distinctive, so characterful. Um, inside, it's pretty much as I expected, the plastics, etc. What I have noticed with the seats, they are they were a little bit soft and squidgy for me. I thought I expected something a bit more hardcore, a bit more. Um, supportive, certainly lateral support, um, but I found them to, for, for road use to be actually quite, quite comfy. In fact, very comfy actually, and, and very usable, certainly on a day-to-day -day basis. One thing I have noticed is um, how small that fuel tank is. As I say, I'm getting generally only 200 miles before refills, um, and I'm returning somewhere about 20 miles to the gallon, which I knew was going to be in that sort of ballpark. But it's just the range is so short, and that's me trying to fill up. I was advised try to fill up when you sort of quarter a tank anyway, which I think is always a good idea, so you're not sucking up the shout at the bottom of the tank. As it starts building at sort of three three and a half thousand revs oh my word it's just this wallop of power 305 bhp on this pro drive sti and, and wow it just delivers it a massive surge and, and, and it just explodes um the gearbox is super short geared um uh perhaps it feels sometimes almost too short geared it's you can almost pull away anywhere in second gear and and I mean, you go along comfortably at 30 miles an hour in fourth gear, um, but you're okay because you've got six gear, so you can still get in that sort of that, 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 that cruising comfortable, comfortable speed. But what it means is just an explosion of power, and you get the car in that sort of three and a half to sort of six and a half thousand range, and it's just all smashes wallop after wallop of explosive power. And if ever a car for me turns around and says, do you know what, for the road, it's 300 brake horsepower, that's my, that's my cat, that's what I say for myself, is I always feel that's always enough on the road. And anyone thinks not, then they're either taking too many risks or they're going to have a flipping big accident or they're going to lose their license. Because for me, your license losing speeds here so quickly that I genuinely heart, heart felt that 300 brake horsepower is more than enough. I'm not interested in making any more out of this car. I don't I don't think it needs any more. I, I, I don't plan tracking it just yet. Whether that changes in time, possibly, but the track cut cars the McGann at the moment. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be my, my, my road car. Um, and the 305 brake horsepower, the way it delivers it, it gives you a, such an occasion. And, and, and I, 
I think some modern cars would just be as quick as the STI. I don't think it's massively quick point to point. I just think the way it delivers it, really old school. That gear stick, it's quite notchy, it's quite mechanical feeling. The clutch is quite heavy, the steering's quite heavy. And, and but, but the way it loads up power, the, the grip that it finds, the traction when you apply the power mid-corner, the way it exits corners, those, those short and medium speed corners, absolutely fantastic. Um, there may be quicker cars, point to point, but I'll tell you something, I don't think many cars offer this much excitement um, on the road as an Impressor STI. And as for the sound, I just don't think I'll have a time of it. Absolutely love it. Big, that's the big reason I went with the UK over the JDM. So what faults have emerged since having the car? What 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 little niggles and problems I've got to fix? Well, there's a couple that I've found. Um, one is there's there's a knocking noise. Um, it's really hard to distinguish where it is. I first thought it was in the sort of the near side front, and I don't know if now it's at the back or. But I'll have to get that. I think um, that sorted. I don't know if it fits. Sounds like it's a sort of anti-roll bar bush or a drop link or something that's just bit of wear I've, I've jacked the car I've had a quick look can't find anything but while I did that I also had a look at the 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 main beam uh, mount that sits under the radiator that is badly corroded so that's going to have to get replaced as well under the uh, under the radiator um, and I'm also keen to get this serviced as well because it's a few thousand miles ago since it was last serviced So what, what, have, what other things have I found out over the last couple of months as well? Um, I think more I've focused on the STI coming with only with only 17 inch alloys. They, the, the, the wheels just look almost too small by modern day size. My previous Porsche Boxster S that had 19s, this the Megan RS has got 19s. I mean, even my little Clio has got 16s. So 17s is, is they just look a little bit too small but I have to say that the ride is absolutely bang on and it's probably helped with those 17s actually a little bit more compliant but yet it's still a firm suspension and it just it 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 clearly Subaru know more about what wheel size, but it's just from an aesthetics to looking at the car itself, they just don't quite look big enough. But it's more about the way it drives rather than the way it looks. So 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 that's but it's just one of the things I always look at the wheels and think, hmm, they just look a little bit small. The other quirk that I've found is here. So what I've noticed when I've washed the car, there's a between on the top of the boot. Water, um, a good few millimetres, just stays and you get a puddle that forms um, on the boot lid, trapped by this huge rear spoiler. Um, now, for me, that's not so much of an issue um, because obviously my car's garaged, so literally I wash the car, I clean it, wax it, etc., and then park it away. But I think if any cars, STIs, um, or any Impressors actually with these, these World Rally spoilers on the back, um, it must lead to issues this and, and certainly I know that the gap and space between the rear spoiler and the boot is prone to rust and I can just see a little bit forming just there um, on both edges probably where water just ingresses between them so again um, I don't know how people find that with if they haven't got garages that in rain I'm assuming there's just a constant pool of of, uh, or puddle of water on top of the boot, boot, boot spoiler. So the key fob, um, I don't know how much or well you can see that, but the, the I, I really dislike single button press key fobs. Yes, I know you might call me really, really fussy rich, who really cares? It's all about how it drives. 
but I'm thinking from everyday practicality. Uh, my Boxster had, Porsche do exactly the same, a one button press to lock, same button to lock, same button to unlock, and I find myself at times pressing it, unpressing it, has it locked, press it again, and I don't know if it's flipping locked or unlocked each time. Why don't manufacturers just give you a button to lock and a button to unlock? And then you know, if you're 10 paces away, is the car locked or not? Every time I feel like I'm going back and checking the door to see if it's locked or not. Um, just a bit, one of my, one of my pet aches is regard to key fobs. Regard everything else though, um, other than a few creaks and squeaks and knocks on the suspension, which very similar to the Began actually, that's, that's notoriously bad for eating away at suspension bits. So I, I've got to get those done because I don't know what it is yet. Um, but a squeak or a knocking noise is bloody incredibly frustrated um, when, you're, when you're driving along. But otherwise, engine feels strong, gearbox feels strong. As I say, I've only done about, I think about seven or 800 miles in the two months that I've had it. Uh, but I've used it most weeks. <laughs> and, and, and it's one of those cars that I picked the keys up to, and it happened yesterday actually with, with, with my son. And he said, Dad, should we just take the SDI out for half an hour? And we took it for a blast for half an hour. And, it just, yeah, it's, I just, I just love it. Um, just when you start the car, um, I, I always like to take over for five minutes. Um, can be a bit, bit difficult when you first drive away, I've noticed. Um, just in the first couple of gears, just for the first few minutes, um, just a bit, bit stuttery, a bit, um, I'm not quite sure if it's just me or whether it's the car, I'll get used to that, I suppose. Um, but I've left, I generally leave it for a good five minutes just ticking over first before I pull away. And I'm always quite prestigious that when I come back that I always leave it ticking for a five minutes to make sure everything's sort of getting back, back down to temperature. And I always back off and keep out of that turbo range in the last five minutes of the drive anyway, which I'm assuming most of you do do. Um, and if anyone's got any tips, any got advice, comments, etc., please drop them below. Um, there we go. That's my initial view, I think, after two months' ownership of this blob eye track PPP STI. Love it, loved every minute of it so far. Really looking forward to um, carrying this uh, ownership into 2022. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me the thumbs up. Please subscribe because it's really important so I can enable me to continue making these really good or shit videos, whatever you think, um, and very amateurish videos, probably. Um, and keep watching, because there'll be another video coming up really, really soon. Thanks for watching.